Hey there, crew. Uh, after reading our Latin American legends, um, we are going to create a landscape that is inspired by the Latin American legends. So, legends, Latin America, landscapes. Pretty awesome. Uh, first, you're going to need a piece of white paper, a pencil, and a ruler. You're going to use the ruler to create a border frame for your uh, landscape. And of course, you want your paper turned in landscape style. And landscape style is the horizontal way. So you turn your paper sideways, uh, and then we are going to make a one inch border. And my trick for making a one inch border is to remember that a ruler is one inch wide. So we know the ruler is 12 inches long, so the length is 12 inches, but the width um, is just one inch. So I am going to line up my ruler at the very tip top of the paper right at the edge then I'm gonna hold it down with one hand flat and then use my other hand to create a line a perfectly straight horizontal line across so now I have a one inch border at the top and I'm just gonna keep turning my paper uh, at every side to line it up at the top there or the edge and then create a straight line. So line it up. Boom. So now I have three quarters of the work done. Now I go to the fourth side. Last but not least. Boom. So now that ruler has created a perfectly straight and even one inch border on all four sides. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Perfecto. Then we're going to use our pencil to create a horizon line. So once your paper's back to horizontal landscape style, uh, you're going to want to only put your horizon line in the middle rectangle for your landscape. So your horizon line is going to be about in the center. You don't have to measure it and be perfect. And of course, in nature, we don't have perfectly straight um, horizon lines. With a ruler, it would be gently rolling. So it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. So in the middle of your rectangle to bow, you're going to just go from one side to the other with a nice gentle rolling line like that. So it's not perfectly straight and it's not too, too jagged or bumpy, but just nice gently rolling landscape. So now we have separated the ground with the sky and you know the horizon line is where the sky meets the earth in a landscape. So the top section will be the sky, the bottom section here will be the ground. And you're going to be able to choose whatever color you want for the sky. Uh, for the ground, we're going to stick to green for grass because we're kind of outside in nature. Um, and we're going to add stuff on top, so don't worry. So I've started um, with a palette. And everyone's going to have green and white and then whatever sky color you want. So I picked turquoise for my sky color. Again, you can pick whatever you want. I have examples of all different colors. Um, so the white is going to be mixed with your green to get a lighter color. And you know from atmospheric perspective that the colors are lighter near the horizon line because that's so far away off in the distance. Colors are darker or brighter and bolder up close in the foreground. So foreground front right here closest to you and then middle ground is about halfway and then way back in the background at the horizon line so far away you can barely see it the colors are going to be a little lighter a little blurrier less detailed um, and then for the sky believe it or not at the very tip top that's like the sky right above your head it's actually darker or brighter and then it gets lighter as it gets off into the distance so anytime something gets closer to the background far away at the horizon line it gets lighter so of course you'll be adding more white to make your color lighter so I'm going to start with the grass I'm going to use straight up green um, right here at the bottom not in my border frame I'm keeping my border frame white right now but in the section that is the grass I'm going to start with green and paint about one third of the way well close to half let's say half so half of your ground is going to be straight up green here. I'm not mixing it at all, just using the green from the palette. Nice smooth strokes, filling that in. And if, it, if you kind of run out of paint, you can just grab some more on the brush 
and start blending it in on the paper. All right. Once you're about halfway through, you're going to start mixing in a little bit of white. So I'm going to steal a little bit of white from my white pile. I'm going to add some green to it. See how it's lighter? It's lighter than my dark green. And I'm going to start blending that in. And when the paint is still wet, it's easily blended. So you can just kind of go back and forth into the dark green and the lighter green. And then add a little more white to your mixture to get the green near the horizon line where it's nice and light because it's further away. And then again, blend it down into your other green there. So it's a nice smooth transition from a darker green to a lighter green as it gets further away. And you can go back into the original green if you want, if it wasn't dark enough. And then you can continue to mix, mix, mix. Blend, blend, blend. Smooth it out. Maybe even a little lighter near the top. But we want a nice smooth transition. And that's the beauty of uh, blending. When the paint's still wet, you can get that nice smooth transition. Boom. So, foreground, front, closer up, darker, bolder, brighter, and then it gets lighter, fuzzier, far away in the background. So I still have a plenty of white in my pile, and then now I'm going to incorporate my sky color, whatever color you wanted. I chose turquoise, so I'm going to flip my palette around, I'm going to get a new brush, or you could wash off your green brush, uh, but for time's sake I'm going to just skip to a new brush here. I'll clean them all later. So I'm going to go near the top here because remember the top is the sky right above your head closest to you foreground sky so I'm gonna use the color straight out of the tube turquoise and again just like the green grass I'm gonna go about halfway down to my horizon with this color without adding or mixing anything nice smooth strokes no bad hair days the thicker the paint the easier it is to blend and smooth out so now I'm gonna steal some more white and make a nice light blue or light turquoise and blend that up smoothing it out and then even more white as I get closer to the horizon and again I'm gonna stop at the horizon line so I'm not mixing into my green now I'm keeping that separate but nice good blending and again, I'm moving kind of quick here. You take your time in your blending and mixing so that you get nice smooth transitions, really nice blending. And then this technique's not only gonna help you on this project, but all other landscapes that you do. If you ever paint a landscape, always keep in mind foreground is the sky above your head, so at the top of your page, and then the ground closest to you at the bottom of the paper, so always lighter at the horizon, always darker, brighter, bolder, more detail in the foreground. All right, I'm digging that sky. So now I would let this dry, and then once it is dry, I would be able to paint a border frame, I would be able to start adding elements um, and objects into my landscape. So I'm going to link a slideshow where I have a bunch of images from the books and my examples. Um, on there so that'll be there on Google Classroom for you but then also um, the stories will be linked in there as well so you can always go back reread the story and look at some of the pictures as well um, if you want to incorporate certain moments from the book too um, I'm gonna keep letting this one dry if I wanted to continue I might jump on to this one and I wanted to show you too because the grass is the same as the one I just showed you starting with the regular green and mixing up into light green but then I chose red for my sky and you'll find out pretty quick that red mixed with white makes pink so it's kinda like a sunset here in the horizon it becomes a nice light pink sky but it's red in the foreground before I mix with white so you can use all different colors uh, for your sky um, you're just mixing it with white to get it light at the horizon 
here's a finished example where I used orange as the sky and then once my painted landscape was um, all dry I used some more paint and oil pastels to uh, create a scene from um, the stories that I read the different legends um, from Mexico and Guatemala and Latin America and then I went into the border frame and used some of the patterns and colors and shapes that I saw and liked from the book and put those in there as well so you can use whatever materials you want I use like a mix of the liquid tempera uh, watercolor oil pastel um, and you could collage you could do pretty much anything that you want um, so that is a finished example there and then I have another finished example where I did a dark blue sky so it wasn't quite as light as the horizon because I started with a darker color I actually mixed uh, dark blue and dark purple so I guess it was more of a blue violet sky um, or indigo there and then it got lighter and I added some of the like temples and mountains and um, nature and a river going back and a bunch of different people and the crazy characters heart of sky and the different uh, symbols and shapes and the patterns that actually were on all the edges of the pages of the book and I have those in the slideshow for you to look at if you wanted to as well so we're remembering our landscape vocabulary with foreground, middle ground, background, horizon line, atmospheric perspective. Things are lighter at the horizon line, way off in the distance. So you're doing color mixing, color theory, landscape and vocabulary, and also illustrating based on legends from Latin America and culture. So, so much is happening, so much learning, uh, so much cool stuff, and I cannot wait to see how yours turn out. Um, so pause and rewind as needed and then of course always share with me uh, your amazing masterpieces I love to see your hard work pay off keep up the good work adios amigos